In this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest comics for the week of 2-4. Looks like everybody's hunting Spider-Man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at Go Collect's hottest comics for the week of 2-4. Now, for those who don't know, Go Collect puts out a weekly article that analyzes the top selling comics based on eBay sales data. And it's always really interesting to, you know, look at their, their top five comic books because I feel like this is uh, really interesting to, to study the market in terms of what are people specking on? What are people excited about? You know, what are sort of the new books that are moving in the market? But before I get into the article, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying content love interacting with you guys let's keep this conversation going and a little bit of other news on friday i was actually on the comic book canon uh channel where they do their live show and uh, i i just wanted to you know throw it to you guys in case you want to see me on that uh comic book canon live show uh they have their vod online and you guys can go check it out i'll put a link in the description uh comic book canon is a great youtube channel they're comic book content creators uh jeff and chris over at journos comics and pop culture which i'm sure a lot of you guys probably know they put a, a, together a weekly show i was on the show uh we had a lot of fun so if you guys want to you know check them out check check me out on the show uh definitely go over and and check out their channel i'll put a link in the description and they're doing a giveaway uh for you know 500 subscribers so you know may as well uh, enter that subscriber giveaway and get a chance to win something all right with that being said let us now get into the this video and this uh, article that i was talking about which is go collects hottest comics for the week of 2-4 and uh, what's really interesting here is you know it, it seems like every week there's always like you know maybe one spider-man book that is you know on the list because of course spider-man is you know one of the most famous superheroes there is but this week we have four spider-man books and so we have a lot of spider-man uh fever it it, it seems like so uh let's get into the article here and take a look at what are some of the books that are trending upwards. All right. So with that being said here, of course, the title of the article is Spidey Rules the List, Hottest Comics for 2-4. And this article is written by Matt Tuck, my favorite contributor to Go Collect. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, I'll put a link in the descri description for this article in case you want to read it. But, um, you know, basically to reiterate, Go Collect puts out this article. This is based on CGC sales data. And you can see here, uh, it takes a look at, into consideration, you know, what books have had the biggest jump in terms of the market. And for me, it's always fun to sort of start at the bottom and work our way up. So coming in at number five here, we have Amazing Spider-Man Annual 21, cover A, up 987 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is is the famous wedding issue where Spider-Man and Mary Jane get married. Now, why is this particular book trending upward? Well, it's a little bit hard to say in terms of, you know, what are some of the, the factors as to why this book is, you know, growing, but, you know, safe to, it's, Suffice to say that the reason why I think there's so many Spider-Man books on the list this week is that we all know that, you know, with everything going on in the MCU, we know that we're going to get a Spider-Man 3 movie, uh, you know, later on this year. So everybody is hunting Spider-Man books. But but why specifically this book? Well, uh, for those who don't know, you know, there's a lot of rumors that Mephisto might be one of the big bads in the MCU. And, you know, there's a lot of talk that WandaVision uh, might have Mephisto and, and WandaVision leads into Spider-Man 3, which leads into Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. And in the comic books, there's a there's a storyline called One More Day where Spider-Man has an interaction with Mephisto and he like forces uh, them to like have to break up their marriage or something like that. Uh, I haven't really read the story, but I, I just know this to be a popular story within Marvel comic books. Actually, it's it's a controversial story because I think a lot of people didn't like this story, but uh, it, it is a notable story. I should describe it as uh, within Marvel comic books. And, uh, you know, so a lot of people are thinking, hey, you know, maybe we're going to get some version of the one more day storyline. If, in fact, we're getting Mephisto, if, in fact, it ties, you know, WandaVision ties into Spider-Man. Uh, we know that, you know, Mary Jane Zendaya is going to play a bigger role in Spider-Man. So I, I think a lot of people are looking at this book as a kind of like a sleeper pick that could be really, really cool. And, um yeah, you never really know. This might be uh, one of those books that, that people are starting to jump on in terms of spec. But uh, with that being said, you know, Amazing Spider-Man Annual 21, still still a very, very cool book, um, you know, just to have. It, it's, it's definitely like an iconic uh, thing, regardless of whether or not it plays a factor in the MCU. Uh, of course, everybody knows Mary Jane as like, you know, uh, Spider-Man's love interest. So, you know, the wedding issue is, is one that, you know, I'm sure people who are fans of Spider-Man would love to have this book regardless. All right, let's move on now to the next pick. And the next pick here is What If number 10 up 989 spots and what is the significance of this well this is the first appearance i suppose you could call it of when um 
Thor is taking up by Natalie Portman's character uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Jane Foster, excuse me. Totally blanked on her name for a minute. But this is the first time that Jane Foster lifted Thor's hammer. Now, there is some controversy to this because, you know, as we all know, this is a what-if book. So what-if book, like, do we think that what-if books are in canon to, you know, the Marvel, um, you know, comic book universe? Nobody really, really knows. But as far as like, okay, well, when was the first time that Jane Foster picked up, you know, Mjolnir and became Thor? Well, it definitely, in terms of publication history, was in this What If book. And that's not to be confused, though, with, you know, Jason Aaron, who created Thor number one in 2014, where he actually did have Jane Foster in a canonical storyline become the Thor character. But uh, with with all that being said, uh, we know that in Thor Love and Thunder, which is, you know, coming out, directed by Taika Waititi, the next Thor movie, they they all all have already alluded to the fact that they're going to do some semblance of this storyline in the MCU with, you know, Jane Foster becoming Thor or at least picking up Mjolnir to some degree. So we don't really know what the, you know, the exact story is going to be, but everybody seems to be, you know, feeling that we're going to get some version of the story. And this kind of brings into question, you know, the whole like debate over like, okay, first appearances, you know, what's, what's truly the first one? Is it this what if book? Is it the Thor number one from Jason Aaron? Nobody really knows, but everybody seems to be like, you know, hunting this book in, in, in some kind of way. I've definitely seen this book as like a key issue in LCSs and they always like hang it on the wall and everyone kind of knows that, you know, it's now going to be a, a key book. And it seems like with this Go, Go Collect article, we're definitely having this book, uh, you know, spike in terms of its its sales. So uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think is like the true first appearance of Jane Foster? Is it this, uh, this what if book or is it uh, you know, or sorry, Jane Foster as Thor. Is it the what if book or is it Thor number one from Jason Aaron? I don't really know, but, uh, you know, definitely the market seems to be chasing this book, uh, as of late. All right. So digging back in here to pick number three, this is a really cool one here. So we have amazing Spider-Man 101 up 993 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first appearance of Morbius, the living vampire. And everybody knows that, uh, later this year, we're going to get Morbius, um, the movie, uh, within the Sony verse, and it looks like it, you know we have uh, you know Jared Leto is going to be playing Morbius, and from you know the accounts of the trailer, like even me personally when I when I saw the trailer, I, I definitely was very very much intrigued. Like for me, Morbius was always a character that like I you know I kind of knew about, but I wasn't you know nobody I, I wouldn't qu- classify him as a tier. I certainly would never have classified him as a character that deserves their own film. But you know with everything in the trailer, it looks like you know they put a lot of you know. Um, uh, reverence into the film and it looks like it might be pretty good and it's interesting because you know we're still uncertain of what's going on with the sony verse and how it relates to the mcu uh, are the universes connected we just got that big uh you know ending of wandavision last week i won't say it in case you guys haven't seen it but you know there is this allusion to you know the the multiverses colliding and so so it's it's interesting to think that you know we have michael keaton vulture who showed himself in the trailer what's going on are, are do we feel like morbius is coming to the mcu in some kind of Way. So regardless, this has been a super, super hot book and has you know really been spiking up. And I, I think with the, the knowledge that the movie is going to be coming out later this year, we know that uh, you know people are wanting to jump on the Morbius first appearance. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's definitely spiking up as a result. And regardless of the movie, it's still kind of a cool book to have. I mean, anytime you have a first appearance, I think that that's pretty cool. All right, let's go on now to the next picks here. And the next, the next trending upward book is a really, really cool one. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 14, up 990 five spots and what is the significance of this well this is the first appearance of the green goblin i mean this is classic classic vintage you know blue chip silver age in my book i mean as when it comes to like villains in the you know marvel universe it feels like to me like i i feel like green goblin is got to be in the top five i mean th- that might be an interesting side discussion to have like sometime later on uh you know who who are like the flagship villain characters but green goblin to me i think like you know everybody everybody knows of the green goblin and additionally, with, you know, some of the other talking points I've had already uh, in this video, you know, we, we know that the Spider-Man 3 movie is coming out later this year. And there's been a lot of speculation that, you know, we're going to get, you know, Jamie Foxx Electro and, and some version of the Sinister Six. Green Goblin, not in that Sinister Six, but, you know, we know that Green Goblin was, you know, one of the main villains for, you know, the Sam Raimi 
uh, Spider-Mans, you know, uh, some years back, and now Sam Raimi is going to be directing uh, this new uh, Spider-Man film, or the sorry, the new Doctor Strange film. So we we kind of know that you know it's always possible that we could see you know uh, a Green Goblin come back into the into the MCU, and um, you know, but for that reason, everybody is you know hopping on all these Spider-Man books and really really excited about it. And this is one that's like you know uh, always going to be a good sort of like investment in my opinion. I mean, the Green Goblin character is like I said earlier, is totally iconic, uh, you know, totally in the top, you know, as far as like villains in, in, in Marvel is concerned. And I think that everybody uh, who is chasing this book is, is, is definitely getting a book that uh, is going to be desired for, for many, many years to come. All right, let's go on now to the last pick here of the hottest trending comics, hottest comics of the week of 2-4 based on go collect eBay sales data and that is going to be amazing spider-man number one up 996 spots and what is the significance of this well this is the second appearance of spider-man and also spider-man's first issue in the amazing spider-man run and you know i i feel like if you're watching this video right now i there's uh, it's like a hundred percent chance that in your lifetime you've purchased an Amazing Spider-Man book. Well, this is the book that started off the run, uh, you know, for Amazing Spider-Man. This is the Grail book for a lot of people when it comes to collecting Spider-Man. Um, you know, it, a lot of people would love to get Amazing Fantasy 15, but this is definitely the you know one A one B as far as like collectors are concerned. And you know, I I think it's obvious that for all the other things that I've said already in this video, with everybody jumping on the Spider-Man stuff, uh, you know, we have uh, a Spider-Man movie coming out later this year, and uh, you know, people want to get their hands on this Grail Grail book, Amazing Spider-Man number one. I mean, why wouldn't you want to get your hands on it? I mean, even even for me, who's someone who l loves the Spider-Man character, but you know, he's not my favorite superhero of all time. Even, even I would love to get my hands on this book. So uh, it, it's really really interesting at that you know everyone is chasing these Spider-Man books. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, for that reason, you know, Spider-Man number one is the hottest selling comic based on eBay sales data for the week of 2-4. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Have you guys been hunting any of these books? Uh, what do you think about the, the whole Jane Foster Thor, Thor thing going on? Like, what, How do you feel about you know uh, the what if books being canon? Are they canon? Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Drop me a like, comment, or subscribe. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.